Ready for another chapter of The Lucius Club by Andrew Clements. Andrew Clements. All right, mine is chapter 21. It's called Welcome to Australia. And mine starts on page 118. Alex stayed tucked away in, inside his comfort, comfort books for the rest of the weekend. When he finished the Swiss family Robinson and left their island, he started The Call of the Wild, surviving in the frozen Klondike. And those two books took care of his Saturday. He spent most of Sunday stuck in survival mode, reading The Hunger Games. By bedtime on Sunday, Alec was four chapters into Hatchet, camped beside a wilderness lake, lost and totally alone. And these favorite books had worked their magic, blotting out his own worrying and wondering and plotting and planning for two whole days. But Alex's reading skidded to a stop as, as the school day began on Monday morning. And once again, he had to deal with real people, all his thoughts about them and all their thoughts about him. Kent, he was in first period art class, acting tough and sneery and impossible to ignore. Nina, she waved and smiled when Alex saw her in third period language arts. But all he could think about was how Kent had probably gone over to her house on Saturday and how they must have played basketball in the moonlight. Plus, Kent had probably taken every chance he got to tell Nina not to hang around that club with that dorky bookworm anymore, and wouldn't she like to just switch over to active games and become a super sports girl because together they could rule the world? <sighs> I am such an idiot. When am I going to get it? I'm not in charge of anybody but my own stupid self. Kent is Kent, and Nina is Nina, and I am me, and that's that. And I have to mind my own dumb business. This silent self-scolding session actually worked pretty well because later when he noticed Kent stopping to say hi to Nina at her table during lunch, it barely bothered him at all. And later when Alec got to the gym and he saw Nina getting another kickball lesson from Kent, he just shrugged and walked back to his table. No imaginary scenes or stories or plot lines. Still, he couldn't help thinking about Kent, but realistically, no fiction allowed. The guy was a bully and a show off. He definitely thought he was the king of all sports. But if someone as smart as Nina still sort of liked him, and he was nice enough and patient enough to help her get better at sports, well, then maybe Kent wasn't such a completely rotten jerk. And even after all that stuff his dad had said about labels, those were the kindest words Alec could find to describe Kent. And with these cheer, these semi-cheery, semi-generous, semi-friendly thoughts in his mind, Alec sat down at the club table. Trying to shift his thinking away from Kent, he smiled at Lily and opened Hatchet. A after just a few pages, the long school day faded away, and then the club table vanished, and finally the whole gym with all its tra drama disappeared. Five minutes later, something bumped the table, and Alec looked up, expecting to see Nina, who was someone else, a boy he didn't know. The kid said, this is the loser's club, right? I mean, that's what it says on the sign. Alec nodded, that's right. Well, I'm here to join. Alec closed his book. How come you want to join? Well, I don't actually want to. Alec stared at him. Then why are you here? Because of Kent. He told me I had to join. What? He picked me for his team Friday, but I dropped two pop-ups during our game. So Kent said that I had to go and spend two weeks in the Losers Club, and then maybe he'd pick me for his team again when I got back. Alec was so angry he couldn't speak. Kent had sent this kid to his club as a punishment, the way the British used to send criminals to Australia? All those calm, half-generous thoughts from minutes before were smashed to bits, and Kent shot right back to the top of Alec's most hated list. The boy fidgeted, then said, and, and Kent told me something else. He said that while I was here, he wanted me to keep an eye on his girlfriend. The kid was embarrassed to say that word, especially with Lily listening in. His face turned bright pink. Alec glared at the guy. Sounding as angry as he felt, he said, there's no talking or goofing around over here. No playing games, no listening to music, nothing like that. And Kent can't make you be somewhere you don't want to be. This table is only for reading, so you better just walk right back over there and tell him. Oh, I know about the reading, the boy cut in. Kent told me. That's why, partly why I got in trouble. Whenever it wasn't my turn, I always sat down to read and Kent kept catching me. And that's when he started calling me bookworm loser. And then I made up those mess ups and now here I am. The boy tried to smile. My name's Jason. Alec did not smile back. The kid started to sit in Nina's spot and Alec snapped. 
Someone else sits there. And to himself, he said, unless she never comes back from kickball cuddle camp. Jason hurried around and sat on the same side as Alec, but far, as far away as he could get. Alec narrowed his eyes and examined the intruder. So, you're in fifth grade? Jason shook his head. Fourth. For a fourth grader, he looked pretty big. Alec scowled and using his gruffest voice, he said, well, like I said, you can't do anything here except read. That's the number one rule of this club. Jason nodded and said, right, okay. He grabbed his backpack and got out a book, then sat up straight, holding out in front of him a serious look on his face. Alec tried to see the title of his book, and he tried to remember what he'd been reading back then. He almost asked, so have you read Because of Winn-Dixie? But he stopped himself. The club rules said he had to let any kid join, but that didn't mean he had to be nice to this one. And then he opened up Hatchet again. The plot was still exciting, and Brian was still brave and smart, still hanging on, still facing one problem after another. But real life kept nudging Alec, and he couldn't get into the story. He glanced up, and Lily was looking at him. Her expression was partly puzzled, but mostly concerned. Alec was too mad to care what Lily thought, and he kept on reading, or at least trying to, because the new kid was so annoying. He shifted his weight, or turned a page, or scratched his chin, or reached for a pencil, Alec noticed. Then the kid began to eat potato chips, and every crinkle of the bag, every munch and crunch felt like a small earthquake to Alec. He groaned inside, and he was just about to yell at Jason when Nina showed up. She looked at the boy, then at Alec. Who's this? Without lifting his eyes from the book, out from his book, Alec said, that's another loser. He's in fourth grade and Kent sent him over to keep me company. Nina tilted her head and looked at Alec a long moment. She almost replied, but then turned to the newcomer. Hi, I'm Nina. The boy glanced at Alec, then back at Nina. Whispering, he said, I'm Jason. She looked at his book and smiled. I love that book. Totally hilarious, right? Curious, Alec took a quick look. The kid was reading Tales of Fourth Grade Nothing. Jason nodded. Still speaking softly, he said, it's really good, but I usually go for stuff with more action, especially stories that are really different from my own life, you know? Like, have you read A Long Walk to Water? Yes, and that part when he went across the desert, that really got me. Yeah, Jason said, and what about the crocodiles? I don't know if I could have, hey, Alex snapped. I'm trying to read over here. He was especially annoyed because he hadn't read the book Nina and Jason were talking about. Oh, sorry. And Jason tucked back behind, back into his book. Alec went back to reading too, but out of the corner of his eye, he saw Nina turn his way and felt her staring at him. Alec kept focused on his book, but he braced himself for a blast. Nina was going to say something, but she didn't. And after she took out her book, Alec didn't know whether he was relieved or disappointed. Part of him wanted to close his book and take Nina aside and have a talk, but instead, Alec just kept reading chapter after chapter about a boy lost in the wilderness, trying to stay alive, which was exactly the way he felt. End of chapter.